In this digital version of the Cell Systems and Organelles lesson, students will engage in several activities with a focus on learning about the organelles that are responsible for cellular respiration and photosynthesis in the cell system. Students will focus on the five main organelles that are responsible for these two processes. They will focus on the nucleus, cell membrane, mitochondria, chloroplast, and cell wall. The first activities are labs where students will look at plant-like cells using cell resamples and animal-like cells using cell samples from the inside of their cheek. There are several options for conducting these labs depending on your instructional model. If you have the availability to get your students on traditional microscopes, you can use the first of the two slides in these two labs. This will allow students to upload sketches of their images that they see in the microscope and then do a written description of what they saw. If because of restrictions with your, your instructional model you are unable to get students on traditional microscopes, there are a couple of other options. The first option is that you can have students create their own smartphone microscopes at home and use those at home to conduct these labs. You can also have students view a video of these labs and then make observations from the video. Both instructions for the smartphone microscope and the videos are available on the website www.scienceopoly.com. For both of the labs, the slides are labeled with the same page number. So for the Celery Lab, the first slide is labeled pages one and two, and the second slide is also labeled pages one and two. You can delete the slide that isn't going to be the one that you use for your instructional model. Same for the Cheek Cell Lab. The first slide is labeled pages three and four. The second slide is also labeled pages three and four. So go ahead and delete the slide that doesn't work for you. After watching the videos or conducting the labs, students will use a Venn diagram to compare and contrast what they saw with the plant-like cell and the animal-like cell. I highly recommend coming back to this Venn diagram later on as they learn more about the two different types of cells and allowing students to add more information as they go along. Students will then engage in a reading passage. As always, they have a highlighter bar that they can use to highlight material. They can control and paste to create more of those. They can also take notes by creating a text box in the margin so that they can have notes of their own that they keep as part of their interactive notebook. At the end of the reading section, students will be asked to think about the four requirements that classify something as a living thing. They will then create diagrams of both animal cells and plant cells by dragging and dropping the organelles into the diagram. Again, we are focusing on the organelles that are responsible for the two processes that we will look at later, cellular respiration and photosynthesis. They will also write a caption telling the function of each of these organelles. In the next slide, students will engage in creating a chart that tells about each of the organelles, their function in the cell, and whether they're found in a plant cell, an animal cell, or both. There's enough space here that if you would like to have students do additional research to look at some of those other organelles, they can include that as well. In the directions, it states that students need to use resources to find at least one other organelle. If you would prefer to leave that out, you can just delete it out of the directions. On page 14, students will answer questions that focus more on the difference between plant and animal cells, and specifically what plant cells have in terms of organelles that animal cells do not have. The final activity is a really fun lab that focuses on how osmosis works with the cell membrane. In this activity, students will create what I call naked eggs by getting rid of the calcium-based shell so that they're left with the egg and just a membrane enclosure. They'll use this egg to experiment with different solutions and see how those solutions can cross over that cell membrane um, using the process of osmosis. This is a great lab for students to do at home because it relies primarily on materials that are easily available at a grocery store. However, if students are unable to conduct them at home, there are videos available of the cells of the of the labs on the website www.scienceopoly.com. You can have students observe the videos and make observations from there. If you would prefer not to do this activity, you can simply delete these slides and then have students not not engage in this activity. 
This is their data collection sheet. If students are unable to take the initial and final mass, that's totally fine. A scale, a kitchen scale at home works fine to record these masses, but if they aren't able to do that, that's fine too. And they can just focus on making observations and using observational data. This is a great opportunity to talk about the difference between qualitative data and quantitative data with students and what might be pros and cons of using either. And then finally, they will do a results write-up where they're gonna focus on what they learned from the lab, what they saw happen, what they observed, and whether or not their hypothesis was correct. In their hypothesis, it's first really important to emphasize that, that a hypothesis is neither correct or incorrect. We're simply asking questions, thinking about our background knowledge, making a prediction, and then using the data from our experiment to either prove that hypothesis or disprove it or come up with additional questions that we need to do additional research on. With their hypothesis, they should really focus on each of the three eggs and what they think might happen with each of the eggs. So for example, since one of the data points that we're looking at is mass or increase in size, they can think about whether or not they think the egg will increase or decrease in mass or increase or decrease in volume or size. I hope you enjoy this lesson and you have um, a and you're able to use it in your classroom. Thanks for watching.